But as I was saying, people, a lot of Christians are uptight. You know, I can't do this, can't do that, can't do that. And it's not things that defiling you. You know, you to convince yourself in your mind that these things are evil and from the devil. The, the Bible says, behold, I have given you all things to enjoy. Really think long about it. Do you think God has a problem with you playing video games? Some Christians just think so. You think God has a problem with you drinking? Most Christians would think so. The ones who are unlearned and unskilled. He said to defile everything is defiled. Everything is defiled. God doesn't want your life here to be miserable. He doesn't. Eat, drink, and be merry. Merry. God teaches you balance. He don't teach you to overindulge. Balance your life out. Get right. Don't be overly righteous. Don't be overly wicked. The first thing is we all sinners, but it's a different between sin and wickedness. You understand? You got to understand the Bible. I'm telling you, a lot of y'all Christians don't enjoy yourselves. You don't. You understand? Don't even want to. And now you spend yourself looking down at everybody else. You can't even go to a family function without thinking you better than everybody else. Because you don't drink. And you don't smoke cigarettes. Really? I done met some of the greatest people that were under the influence of something. You know why? Because one thing about it, it brings out the real you. Whoever you are inside. It's going to come out. A lot of y'all afraid of y'all true self. Oh, y'all ain't hearing A lot of y'all afraid of your true self. Afraid of who you really are. That's why you don't do nothing. I guess you could call that self-control in a way. But if God knows your heart, you can't hide it from him. Eventually it's going to show up and show out. Your true self is going to be revealed. And you're going to be looking in the mirror. Like, whoa, that's who I am? That's who I am? You see, God has to show you your errors. Because we all got them. I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you're a prophet. What the first thing that Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. It's a prophet now. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Why did he say that? Like when he revealed himself to the Lord, the Lord showed him, hey, you might work for me, but you got flaws too. I am a man of unclean lips. Wow, the prophet of the Lord. With doubts, with flaws, just like anybody else. You know, I love the Bible. The Bible's a spiritual book. It tells you this and that. It tells you a lot of things. But you know where you learn a lot? Not through the, not through the book. Okay, let's say I read the Bible, right? And I just read it and I go nowhere. I just stay at home, read the Bible, don't do nothing else. What would I learn by that? Probably learn a lot. But at the same time, I won't learn no real world situations. I won't figure out when, how, can I turn the other cheek if somebody slap me in the face? <laughs> Will I turn the other cheek? A lot of y'all shelter y'all self from the world because... You're afraid. He said, perfect love cast out fear. Right? No need to fear. You got to go through some things. God got to work out the kinks in you. And he got to work them kinks out by you going through some things. I got anger problems. I know I do. Real anger problems. Like, angry, angry. <laughs> and I admit it. He said, you got to confess your sins, right? I admit that I can have anger problems. I can hold it pretty well. But when I snap, I snap. I don't like it. I don't like that me. I don't, but I know it's me. I know that's who I am. You understand? And sometimes I can control it, but sometimes I can't. Sometimes I get to the point where I'm just a different person, man. I'm the type of hold stuff in. Hold it in. I'm the type of build my case. Build my case. You know, like, I let things go and go and go. But the whole time I'm remembering, I'm paying attention. I'm keeping, keeping mental notes of everything that goes on in my life. And I'll hold it. I'll take it. And then I'll explode. 
And you know, a lot of times when I exploded, I wouldn't even drink it. Now, now watch this. I didn't explode it on folks without a drink, a drop of alcohol, right? I don't hear nothing. Nothing about it. Like, oh, some crap. Now, I exploded on people with alcohol in my system. What's the difference? I'm going to ask you a question. What's the difference? Whether you snap sober or unsober. <laughs> it's coming. I didn't give warning sometimes before something happened. And I don't even know why it happened. I'm like, today is the day. Just felt it. Today is the day. It's coming. I just know. You know, intuition, color whatever you want. I just know. And sometimes I try to avoid it. Why? The Bible tells me to. I try to avoid arguing. I try to avoid it and everything. Like with my wife, I just separated from her. I used to try to do anything to avoid the argument. Don't say nothing. But I hate, one thing I hate, not being myself. Y'all ain't understanding me. You know a lot of y'all men out there ain't being yourself because you don't want to say the wrong thing to the wrong person. So you find yourself like this. Bit and bridle. You feel like you find your tongue clinging to the roof of your mouth. You might even be a joker, but you're like, I don't know if I can say that. So you find yourself being more silent because you're trying to please other people. Have you ever been in that situation? Any husband can know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you can listen to your wife all day, say all kinds of things, and not get upset or mad or anything. Then you're like, well, she's finished talking, now let me talk. A woman can tell you about their past relationship, a past fling, and expect you to just, then as soon as you say, I don't want to hear about that. I done learned things about things about most women. They are one-sided. They love to talk, but they don't like to hear you talk. And that's retarded. They'll joke with you. You know what I'm looking for in a woman? A woman I can be myself around. That's it. My perfect self. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. My perfect self. I want to be able to be me around you. Joking, laughing, cutting up, comforting, loving, without consequences. I'm not saying against the, the word of God now. I'm saying be myself. If I can't be myself around you, you're not getting real me. You're not getting the real me. Like you got people in this world, they, they this way around certain people. Now, I always tell people about chameleons. Chameleons are people that adapt to their surroundings. They, if they're around this type of people, they're going to be like that. If they're around this type of people, they're going to be like that. Now, then you got people who are be a, act certain ways around people because, watch this, you don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You try to tone yourself down because of who you're around. And that's not a bad thing. That's not being a chameleon. That's being respectful or whatever you need to be. You understand? You don't change. Like, you got some people that talk like this around black people. They get around people. Yes, you know, um, who the hell is that? I wear had a co-worker like that. Around us? Yeah, man, that motherfucker. Around certain people. I'm talking about the whole tone of your voice changed. Chameleon. You got a lot of chameleons out there. And most people are like, well, that's a people pleaser if you, no. If you're doing something out of respect, something to keep, because you know how some people are. You understand? You know, if it causes your brother to sin, if it causes you to offend them, that's why you know you can joke with some people, you can't joke with some. But you can still know how to joke with certain people. You still don't sacrifice your joking personality. But you know how to reach this person a little different than the other. That's called discernment. Do you understand? Chameleon and discernment is not the same. 
You see, there's a lot of comedians out there, a lot of comedian Christians. Yeah. They change. Just take going to church on Sunday. How many comedians in there? How many of y'all have made a mistake and cussed in the church, in the church parking lot? No, I ain't making a mistake. I have cussed in the church parking lot before. I've said the profanity in the parking lot. How many of y'all willing to admit it? <laughs> How many of y'all that slipped up and cussed inside the church? How many of y'all are totally different people than you are in the church than outside of it? In church, you wear suits, you wear a tie. Then you go get off you to somebody totally different. Why? Why can't you be yourself in the church? The Bible didn't give too many regulations in regards to how you're supposed to dress. Besides, a man shouldn't dress like a woman, and a woman shouldn't dress like a man. Modest apparel. What's modest? You got some churches be like, well, all women should wear dresses. Hmm. What makes you think that? You think a dress can't reveal as much as pants can? I'm just being real with y'all. You know how to dress in modesty. Casual. Not too revealing, not too much. You understand? You know what to do. You know what to wear. You know if it's you dressing like a boy or you dressing like a girl. You know the difference between that. But for all that other stuff, you understand? Pay attention. But a lot of y'all be so many different people. You one person at church, one person outside the church. You know, when I got back on Facebook, I put a term up there. No filter. You know why? I said, I'm going to beat me. You know why I'm going to beat me? Because I don't want down the line. People find out I've been a comedian my whole life. What? You act like this behind closed doors? No, but I act like this in the open. Do you understand? How do you get exposed? By hiding things. I'm finna say shit. Same thing. That's how you get exposed. You hide who you are. And then eventually, God exposes who you are. And shows you who you are To everyone Now everyone's looking like What in the world I always bring up Kirk Franklin I can't believe Kirk Franklin Talked to his kids like that I can't Because sometimes I talk to my kids like that Oh he's a man of God And Yo your kids disrespect them You put them in their place However you You want to act like a thug Guess what Kirk Franklin Like I was in the streets At one point in time I'm still him. Do you understand? Why are y'all faking out yourselves instead of being who you are? I had to stop it. I was fighting too hard to try to be something I wasn't. You know, like I remember when God first took cuss words away from me, I was like freaking, dang God, and I sound like I was in the military again. I'm like, that sounds horrible. I sound like a little three-year-old. Dang on. Now watch this. Watch this. When your kids say freaking, do you like it? Does it still upset you? Because you know what they're really trying to say. Gosh darn it. You know what they really want to say. Gosh darn it. That sounds horrible. Am I, what am I, a Huckleberry Finn movie or something? Gosh darn it. Who says that? You look, you look crazy when you say that. Gosh darn it. Just say it. <laughs> you look more like a grown man when you just say it. Tell you like a fool. Just say it. You understand? Like the Bible says, let no profane thing proceed out your mouth. All right, watch this. You ugly. You don't look good. <laughs> the 
Is that profane? Could be. A lot of things can be profane. If God knows your heart, he knows what's profane. He knows if you're using it. That's why I say I love comedians. No filter. No filter. No filter, people. I try my best. I tried my best for years to be something I wasn't. I'm just going to be a man of God. And if you don't like how God is making me to be, I do not care. Because a lot of y'all need to find who y'all are. You understand? Find who you are. Who are you? Have you been spending your whole life trying to be somebody else? I had to move up the chain. Or to please your wife family. Or to please your husband family. One thing about it, people going to like you or hate you. No matter how much you try to put on a friend. Don't be a chameleon. Please don't. Be you. Let them see who you really is. Within God's guidelines. Well. The thing is. What you are going to be revealed anyway. You can't fool everybody. You know that right? Some people got great discernment. See straight through your chameleon attitude. Like you got some people that hate you. When you ain't around and love you when you're around. That's chameleon. You understand? That's a chameleon. That's what it is. They adapt. They're afraid to be who they are. If the majority of people around you, around them, don't did like you, they start not liking you too. Wow. Then in your face, why do you think they always bring so much information back to you? So and so was saying this, that, and that, and that. What did you say? Did you defend me? Did you back me? What was you saying when they were saying this? So my thing is, if they're gonna say the whole story, just don't say nothing at all. Why are you telling me what this person said? Tell me what you said when they were saying that. Oh, I bet you can't do it. Now, some people only they friend your friend when they can see you. You understand? I am who I am. You piss me off, I show you you piss me off. I gotta show you. Sometime. Not all the time. I told you I build my cases. You should too. Do you understand? I'm trying to tell y'all something. Like I said, I didn't know what I was gonna talk about today. I'm just talking. Regular conversation with friends and enemies. It doesn't matter. Because when you talk, you're gonna be around some people that like you, some people that hate you. So be who you are. Right? Now I got people out there with no filter. Like literally no filter. Like no filter at all. Don't matter what they say, no matter what come out their mouth. Now when I say no filter, I'm not saying I'm just going to blurt out everything that comes to my mind. Because the Bible says be slow to speak, quick to listen. Draw nearer to hear. No, that's not what I mean by no filter. I believe I'm going to bring it to you raw. That's what it means. I'm going to give it to you raw. I'm going to give it to you exactly how it comes to me. I'm not going to change it to please you. I don't have to use it for everybody. You know, you got so many different ways to showcase your works in Christ. Sometimes you got to set the example. Sometimes you got to speak it. Sometimes you got to do this. It takes practice to get there. And I, like I said, you had to learn as you go. Trial and error. Let me pause and I will continue. 